Hello. Thank you for uh, staying till now. Um, I know it's a very long day for you guys. Um, so I'm Thanh. Uh, I'm from Grab. And today I will present my topic. That's the overcoming latency. Uh, how we build a cloud gaming service in Go. Uh, <coughs> agenda, the, the, my agenda is uh, some, introdu some introduction. Firstly, I will talk about some introduction about cloud gaming. And then uh, WebRTC, which is the technology behind uh, the subsequent streaming and uh, how I implement it in Golang. Um, so a few months ago, I read about Google Stadia news and I was so excited. Cloud gaming is the new generation of gaming platform and it's a very innovative idea. Uh, we're always familiar with backend and frontend and we know that the more information backend can provide, the more flexible frontend can render. And applying the same methodology to game, if we maximize backend control and minimize frontend logic by running game on server and just stream video, uh, we can no longer have a limitation on hardware. And indeed, Google Stadia allow you to play some kind of AAA games on YouTube. And not only game, if we uh, on for the other thing like heavy offline application, we can stream it to uh, browser or mobile like Photoshop and operating system. We can run Microsoft Windows on Google Chrome OS or uh, on Google Chrome browser or we can run Adobe Photoshop on tablet. That's a uh, the, <coughs> there's no limitation for it. And the challenge um, is uh, looking at some popular media streaming platform like Twitch, YouTube Gaming, uh, it all has few second latencies. Uh, but our goal is to have a smooth user interaction. We need to keep the gap between input and media as small as possible. And so I'm also curious how did Google do that? And I decided to write a proof of concept uh, in Go because I'm familiar with that. And th it turned out that Go is perfectly fit for my case because Go has a good support for data stream and uh, concurrency support. Um, my project, after post to Reddit, uh, it's become top one in Reddit uh, trending and it also become top one in GitHub, Golan. Uh, yeah, this is uh, on that day, <coughs> and this is the demo of uh, that. So here I run the game on a browser, uh, even PS4, I can run it on browser also. And uh, the game is very smooth, I can play it, uh, yeah, well. This is my uh, play with Mega Man. And because I have a full control of the game on cloud, so I can do anything I want. I can save the game later and I can reasset it everywhere. And because it's uh, on mobile browser, so I can play it on uh, even mobile. Um, so I will take uh, talk about the test stock. Uh, 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 firstly, uh, one of the key uh, idea that I find from uh, building this is single player. It sounds simple, but it's one of my key finding. It makes cloud gaming different from normal streaming service because when we focus on single player, we don't need centralized server, we don't need CDN for storing uh, the stream. We don't need to share the stream with anyone. And I also use some uh, game emulator library to have a full control of the game. So I can hook the game, hook the image frame and audio frame directly from, uh, from the game and then stream it out. And I have a more control on the game state. And I also use video compression and audio compression, that's a VPS to assist for 
and Opus. Um, this is web RTC, which is the technology behind. Uh, because of the time limitation, I cannot deep dive into that. But uh, basically, it's the real-time communication uh, project that's a, uh, that provides a simple API that you ca can make the P2P communication. Uh, so, and it also have a support with common code like VP8 and 2S64. It can run on multiple platform, browser, and mobile. One of the most famous uh, features of WebRTC is not traversal by ICE. It's like you can, by, by this way, you can, uh, even if the two peer is behind NAT, it's also, it still can find the, it's, public address of the order and then can send uh, some bucket to the other peer. And the idea, uh, I will talk about a little bit about the idea of video compression and audio compression. I'm indeed not implementing it, but I need to understand how it works under the hood. And, um, so I can estimate how good the result will be and uh, debug when the unexpected behavior. So video compression, the idea is to omit non-essential bits of information and it even transform the image to some form that, have, that is better for analysts and also they can have to omit more bits. The frames and different from the video compression is different from static image compression because uh, the video compression can make some infer inference from the previous frames and feature frames. And as you can see in the example, uh, we have uh, four frames, but the Pac-Man, uh, because it's static, we don't need to send it over internet, but only the dot it update and transmit to internet. And audio codec follows the same methodology. Uh, it also omits some data that cannot be perceived by human. And the one that is, uh, that is the best in the field is Opus. It, and it also designed to transport over real-time transport protocol. Uh, so it can easy, easily plug into WebRTC. And it has really low delay latency. And because uh, that technology is very impressive, so in Go we have uh, some uh, from some framework named Pyong, and it's a the very lively community. And I think you guys should uh, join that. I learned from learn a lot from uh, those guys also. And here is uh, how I implement the cloud gaming service in Go. Um, so how, no matter how your video compression, how good your video compression, how good your code is, network latency is still the one that contributes the most to the latency. So the infrastructure needs the mechanism to define the closest server to the user. So, and here, you, as you see, uh, I have a user. When user connect to the coordinator, it will ping all the all the worker listening. That's what is the closest server uh, of the user. And then after I define the after I define the best worker for the user, I will uh, the coordinator will set up the connection between worker and the user. And in the project, I have a heavy usage of Go Channel. Uh, and as the last, as the previous talk, Go Channel is also a very uh, interesting idea from Go. And um, indeed, Go Channel help simplify event stream and deal with concurrency problem in my code easier. As in the project, I have a multiple component running parallelly in different Go routing, and each component manages each of state. And every time a component want to com want to combinate with each other, it will combinate K over channel, no shared state, no lock, so no, with there will be no concurrency problem. This is the whole diagram look like. Uh, I have a web RTC transmitter component that is 
all of the components, let's see, orange here, is a running parallelly, and web RTC transmitter is the user-facing component. That's a, uh, that, that's the way on the input from user come in and on the output, on the encoded media come out. I have a game emulator run separately. It's a, on the game like NES, GBA, and I have a uh, image encoder and audio encoder. It's also running in background, and every time it list it, all, all of the component component communicate over channel. And like image encoder, it keep listening to the channel. And every time there is event in, there is new frame from game emulator coming, they will uh, process the uh, the image, and it's on. Uh, it will output the encoded image after it finish. And the other pattern. Uh, the another Golan pattern that I feel that perfectly match for my use case is Funny for now. The implementation is simple, but the result is very great. Uh, do you know which black Pokemon is look like what you see in the screen? There are many people uh, playing the same game and fire a lot of input. And uh, so it, it can e be easily written in Go by applying, f if I find input, to the user and find out result media to the to the uh, the user. So this is what it look like if I write. So uh, in the funny input, I listen from on the on the session on the web RTC session and put all of that in the same input channel. And in the find out output is in the find out output. Uh, for every chat, for every event from output channel, I will send it out to the to each person. So it's very simple, but uh, I can achieve the similar as to which play Pokemon. The other the other thing is uh, for handling con concurrency. Uh, mm. This is rarely used in my daily coding, but uh, in this project, I have a have a use of heavy use of that. Um, so the use case is when input from WebTC or user change the game state in emulator and uh, the save of operation from user requires an unspoiled snapshot in emulator. And, as, uh, and because we communicate over channel, um, we can decouple the web RTC, uh, the web RTC code to game em game emulator, and in the game update in the game emulator, uh, I keep pulling for on the event. Uh, if this is a uh, safe event, I will perform some safe operation. If it's a some input event, I will uh, process some input uh, operation, and because. The select statement in Golang, uh, I can make it uh, so I can fully avoid race condition because all of the operation is doesn't touch each other. But uh, uh, Golang also still have uh, some problem. Uh, I still have uh, some problem using Golang because channel is very slow. Comparing with lock channel, it's just a simpler way to deal with concurrency and event. It's not the faster way. Behind channel, it is locking and waking logic. So try to avoid channel in hotspot and try to avoid selecting too many events in the same time. This is the profile attack from uh, my code. Uh, and every, most of the CPU time is to wait for the uh, event from select. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, the channel is the head edge. Uh, if you forgot close channel, it make go routine leak. Uh, and yeah, um, there's some thing, some uh, thing like passive receiver. So it's like there's encoder. The encoder keep listening for uh, for event from a channel. But in uh, Golang, but in Golang, only the writer can 
close the reader. So the passive uh, reader is even, I still don't know how to close the passive reader. Yeah, and there are a lot of problems working with channel pipeline. And uh, code library and emulator uh, that I apply in the code is also written in C. Uh, because there is no good implementation of those encoder and emulator in uh, Golang right now. And as Dev, Dev Chine say, Sego in North Go, and I indeed feel the pain working with Sego because any, pro, any panic from Sego, I cannot catch, and uh, the profiling show nothing but Sego when I profile. However, profiling profile is still a good tool. Uh, I think everyone should use it for daily code for production because if you use GoRoutine profile, it can check if the code is stuck at what line. Uh, you know when will be when will your GoRoutine will leak, and uh, you have a memory profile. I have uh, the case that the image frame kept getting a lock, and it caused the program program really slow, and. You can use trace profile to see if on the cores are fully utilized. And uh, feature improvement. Uh, currently, the encode limb pipeline uh, is running on CPU and it's uh, and it's is a bottleneck for my project because I cannot run like AIA game because uh, the CPU for video compression and audio compression is very slow. Uh, and I can make like uh, interface, so not only game but anything can be hosted on my platform. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you uh, if we have time, then I will show the live demo. <laughs> okay, Andrew, need to am by foot. Sorry, this is now. <laughs> Uh, because the networking is not uh, really good uh, right now, so I am not sure. Okay, this is... Uh yeah, okay. That's all. <laughs> Thank you.